<laughs> so I'm Patricia Remical. Um, I've been an Agile coach in some very large organizations like QVC and Freddie Mac, but I've spent, um, frankly, the majority of my career um, as the head of product and engineering at smaller growth stage companies. And so one of the things I'm going to talk about today is something that's near and dear to my heart, and that's how to do product discovery effectively. Most of my experience, as opposed to some of the speakers we've just heard from, has been in commercial software development. Um, so so not, not the government. Um, but let's, let's get this started. So the first thing is, is, you know, the number one agile principle that we have is that our highest priority is to satisfy the customer through early and continuous delivery of valuable software. But what do we know what's valuable? Most of the companies today, and you'll hear there's somebody called Marty Kagan, if anybody who's into product management, he is sort of, uh, uh, you know, a, a savant in the product management uh, space. He runs Silicon Valley Product Group. Um, he rails against the fact that most companies today have turned into what he calls feature factories. And so, you know, they were churning out features and we're thinking that that is something that, that therefore, we're, we're fulfilling our mission, but we're not. <laughs> um, how do we validate that what we are developing, the solutions we're developing, the feature sets that we're developing are actually meeting the underserved needs of our target customers? How do we go about and validate that product market fit? And more importantly, how do we validate that product market fit before we expend precious engineering cycles doing major development projects? So this is a really critical problem, especially, as I said, I come from working with a lot of smaller software companies where they really struggle with this. So this is where effective product discovery comes in, right? And this is where companies who are more sophisticated are going through an exploration phase where they are going out and doing the market research. They're ideating on how they might uh, address the problems that they're finding with their customers. They're evaluating what might be the most effective way of implementing those solutions. And then they're going through a prototyping process where they're going through and prototyping those different solutions, testing it with their user base, learning from that, and feeding that back into another exploration phase and iterating on this, right? This is one of the key tenets of Agile that, that, that has been talked about, but most companies can't do this and can't do this effectively. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, uh, there's a quote here by the CEO of Microsoft. The heart of product discovery lies in the relentless pursuit of understanding the unspoken needs of users, the courage to challenge assumptions, the agility to adopt an ever-changing land state. It's not nearly building what the user wants, it's about crafting what they need before they even realize it, right? So. That, that just would, that blows the minds of most, most software companies where all they're trying to do is come up with, you know, stay one step ahead of their competitors at this point. So this is where, you know, the, the better, the best of the best software companies, this is how they are, they are, they are thinking. Most companies shortchange the product discovery process. It's too expensive, it's too time consuming, it's too data intensive. Most companies, what they really do is they skip the exploration phase altogether. They jump directly into maybe validating preconceived solutions. So they might go through some prototyping, but there is already a preconceived solution out there. And frankly, a lot of the validation that they do ends up being biased and sort of just, uh, you know, uh, giving the rubber stamp to going ahead with the development of these solutions. They might interview a handful of customers who they hope represents the market, but in reality, really, these customers are really just the squeaky wheels, right? Or it's their biggest customer, their biggest revenue generators, and that's who they're talking to, and that's all they're talking to. Um, they might rely, they might try to blast out something to their entire user base, so they might come up with surveys where they blast it out and try to get as much information from their users, but again, these are normally multi-choice uh, answers. And what they're missing is the valuable conversations they can have with their users to really go do like a five why analysis. You know, where they, you know, tell me why you want to do that. What's really the root cause of this problem when they really have to get down underneath the covers. Um, or, God forbid, they take input from the sales team and they think that's the proxy for talking to the customer, where rarely the sales team is, this is just what I need to make my quota, right? 
This is the reality. This is what most software companies are dealing with. So this is where continuous product discovery comes in. There's a great book out there called The Continuous Discovery Habits by Teresa Torres, if many of you are interested, and where she talks about how successful companies who are really developing true software solutions are doing product discovery on a continuous basis. This is not just at the, you know, the beginning of some major initiative on your roadmap. This is something where com companies that are successful have built this into their culture and are doing this on, on a continuous basis. So how can the, the software companies that aren't sitting you know, in the ivory tower of Silicon Valley, how can they really do this? Well, I, I feel that we are at the cusp of a major transformation um, from a product management perspective, where there is a boatload of tools, and I'm gonna go through some of them, that are going to make this achievable for, for, for companies. There are tools out there for ideation, user feedback and customer sentiment analysis, AI-assisted requirements, and prototype development and testing. <clears throat> um, I'm gonna credit the, the, the graphic here to Marilyn Nikita. She is the AI product manager at uh, Google, and she, run, she actually does a great course on AI product management on Maven, if anybody is interested. So here's some of the tools. I'm not associated with any of these companies. Um, I've played around with all of them, um, and I'm gonna show you the results of some of, of, some of them uh, uh, today. So on the ideation, uh, uh, in the ideation phase, there's tools out there like Synapse and Storm AI, which are really interesting tools for brainstorming. It's things where you're like, okay, here's, you can, all you literally do is tell them, here's the unmet need that I see in the market, or here's the problem that our customers are having. Give me some ideas. And it will spit out <laughs> several different ideas as to how, they, how the, the model thinks that you might start thinking about how you might meet that unmet need. And it is fascinating because invariably there will be something in that list where you're like, I didn't think of that. That's like, I didn't even go there, right? So it is, it's, it's a great way of actually just starting to think outside of the box and really helping to brainstorm. And you can just sit there very quickly and iterate with these tools from a brainstorming perspective. The biggest group of tools that are coming to market are in this user feedback and customer sentiment analysis section. There's a ton of tools in this area because this is what, this is what AI is good at. There is a ton of data that has been now, there, there's a number of tools that have been developed over the years where companies need to get, um, get their, their hand on the pulse of how their users feel. So there's a lot of tools now that you can build into your product that will allow the users to give feedback, give thumbs up, give thumbs down, and give you, give you that sort of feedback. The problem is, is that as a product management team, you don't have the time to go through all of that feedback and sift through it and really find what the, what the key insights are, right? So that's where these tools come in. These tools are taking things like app store reviews, support ticket backlog, call transcripts, Slack channels, you name it, they have a plugin for it. I guarantee you, or they will add it quickly, and they ingest all of that data for you, sift through all of the customer sentiment and user feedback, and come up with basically a SWOT analysis for you. And it allows you then to use this to then start building your roadmap so you can tie it back to this SWOT analysis and sort of justify why there's certain things on the roadmap, why you might need to prioritize something over the other. Um, and they're very useful. Um, Zeta.io is one that actually allows you to start building the roadmap right in their tool um, after they, they sort of do this analysis for you. The last one on this list, Aro, is a little different. It's, it's one of the things that's not like the others. Um, and this is where, if you're going out and doing interviews with their customer, with their, the, the problem that they're attacking is that they, they feel that you should be going out and talking to your customers, having these meaningful conversations, doing the five why analysis, and really figuring out, okay, what is the unmet need? But the reality is, it's not scalable, right? You can't go out and talk to every customer. And if you go to the other end of the spectrum and you just do multi-choice multi surveys and you blast that out to your users, you miss the valuable conversation. So they've built a chatbot. 
that basically that you can use to go put in front of all your users and they can and it they can have a conversation with the chatbot. The chatbot actually adapts its what it's asking the user based on what the user's telling it. And it basically goes through a 5Y analysis for you to really sort of dive down into really figuring out what the unmet need is of that user. <clears throat> um, the next tier is their AI-assisted requirements. So um, chatprd.ai is becoming very popular with product managers. It was developed by Claire Vu, uh, who is the chief product officer at uh, LaunchDarkly. Um, she actually developed this for her team as just something to use internally um, because she thought they would become more efficient and effective. And then she basically realized how valuable it was and launched it as a solution. And she continues to work on it on the side um, as her weekend job. Um, but it, it is, it's, it's, um, it, and she continues to train the model. It, 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 it's pretty good. Delibra is basically a competitor to chat PRD. It comes out of, I think, Sweden. Um, so they both do PRDs and things like users, personas and strategy documents. There's a couple different uh, product management documents that they, that they help you create. And then the last one here is, Je you heard Jessica talk about this this morning, and I'm sorry she's not here because she said that this, this is the one where it really you know, sort of keeps her up at night because she comes from a UX background. But there's a whole set of tools out there that are allowing you to quickly create high fidelity, clickable prototypes that you can put in front of users to test out your uh, solution um, using, by just describing what you want the, the, the app to be. You don't need to be a designer. It will design the screens for you, add the interactions. I'm gonna show you so, a little bit of this. A lot of these are Figma pl plugins that you'll see. Um, and then the last one here is a little different in that this is the one, it's sort of similar to the customer sentiment analysis solutions that I talked about. This one actually can be used to ingest all the data you might use as you're doing user testing. So it's going to look at videos, it's going to look at a lot of things that you might record as you're doing your user testing, and it's going to figure out um, your, where the friction is as the user is trying to use you know, some of your prototypes. It's going to actually synthesize a lot of this data. If, you, if you're looking at video, if you're interviewing the user, um, it actually takes all of that, ingests it, and then basically tells you what's the strengths and weaknesses of the prototype that you're trying to test. So this is just a sample. Has anybody used any of these tools? No? Is, it, is there, you have? Um, has, um, is there, and, I'm, and, as, and there's so many AI tools out there that are popping up. I'm sure there's others uh, that should be on this list that I didn't mention. But again, these are the ones that I've kind of played with. So I'm going to actually switch screens and show you the results of some of these. <laughs> so uh, this is an example of um, Synapse. So I started this project called Swirl. This is the name I gave it. It's, and I basically said, why do we, this is the problem statement, why do we want a way to capture information of people who come into their tasting room so that they can know what they liked and did not like and so they can follow up to try to upsell them wide and ideally get them to join the loyalty club. Um, so you're gonna see, this is right before happy hour, so you're gonna see a theme here, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so, you know, it, it, it went through and it basically started generating ideas that you could you know, use to actually address this. And the one I sort of liked, I, was, I, I focused in on wide uh, the wide, uh, wide circle socials. And it said, implement a feature where guests can virtually join tables or circles based on the wines and types of wines they prefer. By sharing their experience with others, they bond over their tastes. And I said, okay. I said, mock up a, a user interface of this. So it then sort of gives me the visual. It says, oh, imagine this. And again, you can take this and cut and paste it to any of the Figma tools, this, 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 this presentation. Um, and, I, and it said, would you like me to come up with uh, creating a draft image? I said, sure. So again, this is, imagine if you're creating a business case or something and you're needing to sort of put something in front of a leadership team and get them to buy off. I find always creating visuals is also, also a fun thing. So I then said, well, expand on this idea for me. Tell me a little bit more about it. 
and it starts going into, okay, here are the different features that I would do for the wide, wide circle socials. And literally, I'm not giving it much information, right? It is just spitting this stuff out. And as you can, and as I'm hoping you can see, that this would be great just for, from a brainstorming perspective, right? You could actually just continue double clicking on these things and have it brainstorm along with you. The next one is chat PRD. So this is where I took, uh, I took the idea for Swirl. And I basically said, hey, I want to write a PRD for this. So I have a product called Swirl. It will be an app used by winery patrons doing their tasting experience in order to capture their insights about wine, leverage this information to upsell them wine, and eventually get them to sign up for the loyalty club. Exactly what I did to Synapse. It asked me, OK, who's, who's the customer? Who's going to actually buy this app? Who's the users of the app? That's interesting. Um, and then it basically said, great. And it, start, and it spits out the, basically the beginnings of a PRD. It goes through the TLDR, the goals, business goals, user goals, user stories, your, your user experience, not much there, I will say that, um, success metrics, technical considerations, and milestones and sweet sequencing. Now, this is pretty bare bones. Um, but then you can say, OK, I looked at the goals. Right up here, and I'm like, I told you that one of the goals was, you know, that I, I'm sorry. I looked at the I looked at the goals, and I said, well, add a goal for the user being able to sign up for the loyalty club from the app, and the users being able to connect to the wine store for the winery to purchase wine, because one of the things it basically said was that building a marketplace for wine sales within the app was a non-goal. I'm like, no, I want that to be a goal. So. It says, sure. So it goes through and revises the goals. It then even says, well, these additional goals not only aim to direct revenue generation, but you know, here are some technical considerations you need to think about. Um, so it actually goes through and actually, you know, it's very conversational. And it, it, you literally can use this to basically build out your PRD uh, very easily and very quickly. Delibra is the competing one. Here's the, the PRD it created. So it has an executive summary, problem statement, custom, who the customer segment is, what are the measures of success, um, here are your functional requirements, here are your user stories. So this, they went into a little bit more, right? What is the acceptance criteria for each of your user stories? What's your rollout? What's your launch strategy going to look like? How are you going to actually roll this out? Um, and what are your risks and considerations? So each of these tools allow you, by the way, to actually modify the template that you want to use for whatever your PR, like what your sections are and stuff like that. And so it's, they're very easy to work with and um, very, uh, as I said, very conversational. So then you can take this and plug it into the UI stuff if you want to create a prototype. So I basically took the wine tasting app. I said, create a prototype for me. I have not touched any of these screens, so I haven't even iterated on this. It automatically generates all these screens. But then the interesting thing, it, all, it creates it as a pl clickable prototype. This is, the preview, this is the preview of it. So oops, let me go back. So this is the you know, first screen of the clickable prototype. You want to say, get started. This is your personalizations. There's notifications that you have uh, within the app. You can actually search for wine. You can say, I like red wine. Now, this is where AI gets a little wonky, right? You notice the second wine there is a Chardonnay. <laughs> There's a problem with this, but anyway. Um, so. But, but the thing is, is I, didn't, I literally didn't do anything but type up the description of this app, and I, I could generate all this. And this took me 15 minutes, maybe, to do all of this. So any product team that is not starting to take advantage of these tools is going to fall quickly behind their competitors, and they're just not going to be able to keep up. So with that, any questions? So um, are these, uh, you know, are these available for a certain cost? Uh, 
each, you know, is there sort of All what's of this the was done with the trial versions, by the way. All of these were done with, with, with the freemium versions. All of them are freemium. In other words, you can get into all these tools, do your first couple projects, and then you'll, uh, you, you probably have seen some of the prompts on some of the screens. Either it's a trial period of 15 days, which then you have to upgrade, or like you could only do three projects and then you, know, you have to move up. But all of them are SaaS-based subscription solutions at a very low cost, all of them. Awesome, thank you. Um, are there any trainings online or in person that any of these tools provide, or is this just something that you just practice and learned on your own? I am one of those, I'm, I, li I like playing with this stuff, so I just, I'm like, I just dive in and start using it. And so I, th th for UI Zert as an example, there was online prompts. So for instance, adding some of the interactions, I literally said, okay, you laid out all the screens, um, I want to do, I want to change some of the interactions. You could ask, and again, these are all things where you could have a conversation in English with these things, and it, sh and it then highlighted how to do the interactions for me. So they're very user-friendly. I found all the tools to be very user-friendly. Great. Well, that, I think means right. we can head to cocktail hour. Thank you. <laughs>